All right, guys. So today we're going to be going over um, pretty much falling wedges um, and rising wedges. I'm not going to lie to you guys. I'm not a big fan of rising wedges in the first place, but still got to teach you guys so you guys can know when you see it. Um, also, uh, we will be going over pretty much introducing you to the EMAs that I use and kind of how I use them. Um, so you guys can use that on a day to day basis. Now, I will say quick, um, quick disclaimer. I did come across a new um, EMA that I am testing out right now is in the test phase. I'm not going to tell you guys um, that EMA just yet. It's in the test phase. Um, so um, literally, it just became in the test phase today. So uh, if you do see that, you know, when it comes to stuff like this, I always tell you guys, um, once I learn anything new, I always come back and tell you guys what I learned. So um, I'm definitely testing out another EMA right now. And I will keep you guys updated. But we're going to go over the ones I've been using so far and what's made me profitable to this day. So, all right. So first, first starting off, how was um, our class about flags yesterday? How do you guys feel now? Like, did you guys, I seen somebody say that they use, they, you know, from the class, they order, they automatically use it um, yeah, uh, and today, today's trading. And they made some money off of it, uh, what we just uh, did over yesterday. So caught a couple of flags yeah i use a flag today uh, i'm gonna i got the the videos are done i literally just have to send the link in the chat now because you can't see the videos unless i send the link i forgot that i have to um send you guys the link because you just can't go on my youtube to see it so um i only feel comfortable playing flags it's little i legit know people that only play flags i li like legit i have a friend he only trades flags like if it's not a flag he's not going to trade it and you can tell he don't really lose as much, but he also don't make as much money simply because, you know, just waiting for him. You know, it's kind of, you know, kind of hard. But first, before I wanted to get into the first flags, I wanted to show you guys. Um, I put it in a chat today, a flag. Actually, I don't even have to do that. I could just go straight to the chart. So this is a flag that I caught today on coin. Um, right here. So as you can see, like I said, they're not pretty. But this is a flag that I caught today on coin. So um, this is exactly how I took the trade. So let's delete this first. All right, let's delete this first. Let's draw it out real quick. So what did I do? I see, what is this move right here, guys? I'm going to drill this in your mind so you can catch it. What is this move right here? Impulse, right? We're looking for an impulsive move. Once we got that, you don't have to draw it all the time, but if you want to, you can. You can draw the impulsive move, right? We drew that, and then we draw the actual flag, right? We drew the flag. So there we go. We had an impulsive move. What's this next move right here? What is this? Get used to saying it. What is this move right here? Correction. And then we had an impulsive move. So let me tell you exactly how I took this trade, right? I'm gonna walk you through this trade exactly. So I seen that we had an impulsive move up, but let me first let me tell you how coin even came on my radar because I think people will be forgetting like how do these stocks actually pop up. So one of the things that I noticed that um, if the market is pushing, coin's supposed to be pushing with it because normally to be a legit push, you want crypto to kind of you know kind of push as well, right? The market shouldn't be pushing by itself. Crypto should be pushing with the market. That I kind of use crypto as a gauge a little bit to tell, and I would we would get more into detail on what I use and stuff like that. But that is one of the things that I use. I use crypto, so I look at Bitcoin. I'm looking at crypto to kind of see like, is this uh, if we're pushing, are we pushing for real, or is this like a fake out or whatever? And crypto is kind of something that I use to kind of decide. You know, normally if crypto dying, I'm not gonna lie, the market is gonna be dying as well. So if I see that. Uh, you know, the market is pushing and crypto probably not dropping, but it's kind of like being stagnant or it's kind of like it's just not moving for real. It's kind of like consolidating. Then that gives me an indication that, you know, we're going to push on, on those crypto stocks. Right. That's a little hidden gem for you guys that didn't know that. That's one of the ways that I use to catch coin. Right. If I see the market pushing, I see coin tripping, you know, coin might be flagging or whatever. Normally, that's what it is. If the market pushing coin is normally flagging. Sometimes they don't push right away. So that's that's what originally put coin on my watch list in the first place right so that's a quick way on how i did it so i'm using crypto to kind of gauge the direction um, of the market and vice versa so as i come here you know i'm looking through the chart so uh i'm looking to see what i can see at the time none of this had happened yet right this is all pre-market so the market had opened and it pretty much was um 
we had this dip below, but then it turned into like this uh, pin bar, hammer, candle, however you want to follow it. But what is what am I noticing right here on this week, guys? What is making me think calls? First of all, we're flagging, but also what else am I looking at? What is this long week signifying? What is it telling me? Buying pressure, right? It's telling me that buyers are there. Buyers are right there at support. This level was there before I even plotted it. Um, this level was already here. This was previous support and resistance, as you can see. Um, so I started seeing this wick that's telling me buying pressure, right? So what I did was, I was on an hourly chart when I took this trade. What I did was, as I noticed that wick and we started coming back above, I took the trade around this area. Now, I will tell you, there were two different ways that I took this, right? I took it around this area and my stop loss was if we close below here or we break back below here, right? As you can see, we didn't. We started to break out. Now, this is where this trade kind of went against me because um, you see right here as it was breaking out, right? Then we got to pull back here, right? And I had a stop loss set. I had like a price percentage stop loss. So I ended up getting stopped out of this trade the first time, right? But I still, it, you know, the play was still invalid, but I mean, the play was still valid, but I was trading on a little bit smaller account. And I told you guys how I grow my accounts, right? When I hit that percentage stop loss, I'm out of that trade. And then I just re-enter, right? Instead of trying to hold through the blood, right? So as you can see, you know, I took this trade. We ran up a little bit, right? I probably, actually, now that I think about it, I might have took it a little bit around here. I didn't take it right at that low. We closed. I think I took it above this area, right? And then we finally broke above. Then we pulled back. And that's when I went negative. And I went ahead and cut this trade. But I did notice we were still in the bull flag. So what I did was I cut it. And then I just re-entered, right? And then I took this trade, right? So I took the trade, ran up. It hit my target here. This was 30% right here. I trimmed most of my uh, positions off here. And then I let some of them run past that. As long as we held this level, uh, that was my level to hold past my stop losses. And I was able to capture the next target, right? And I was pretty much out. I didn't get to see all of this, right? As soon as I got this candle right here, I was pretty much out this trade. So basically, so I don't confuse nobody, I was able to take most of my profit here for about 30%. And then um, as long as we held above this level, I was able to keep, you know, I'm saying I was able to keep it. Um, um, I was able to uh, keep those runners and let them run up to that next target. And I was out then. Normally I do two targets and I'm pretty much out. Um, how, and I can add my EMAs to kind of gauge, um, I, cause I did have my EMAs up for quick transparency. So let's add that EMAs. Hold on. All right. We got my EMAs. So also, you know, what made me, you know, know to keep getting back in, it was still holding my EMAs as well. And we just rolled it up. Right. So technically I should have never sold coin at all, because as you can see, it's still holding this nine EMA. I could have probably swung it for tomorrow as well, um, just because it's holding that nine EMA. But, you know, we take profits and live to trade another day. Um, the question is, how would you know if it was not valid anymore? Easy. This is really easy. Don't let that confuse you when I say invalid or not valid. If it's a bull flag, where would it no longer be a bull flag yet, guys? Keep it simple. Where would it no longer be a bull flag yet? Breaking below. Breaking below what? Right, below support. So if we had a candle actually close below here, below this level right here, this once, I mean, this 6440 level, if we had it close below that, that means the bull flag is no longer valid. But whole time, as you can see, we wick below but we never closed below. So bull flag was still intact, right? So the trade was still valid. We just got shaken out from the percentage gain, from the percentage wise, but overall, right, I'd rather cut there than um, try to hold, right? And that was able to still, you know, keep my account. That's why it's important that you guys don't use all of your buying power, guys. Like, and this is one thing I'm gonna get on before we go over wedges real quick, is make sure that you're not using all of your buying power for every single trade. I have traders that do this all the time, right? They got a thousand dollar account. They use all their buying power in that first hour of trading. And then they can't, like, if they take a loss, they can't go, they, they see another setup that might have a better reward or whatever. And then they don't, um, they can't catch it because they ran out of buying power. So now they have to take a loss for the day. And then um, the next day they might do it again. And then you see after repeated times of doing that, you end up blowing your account eventually. So what I recommend is um, definitely not using all your buying power. 
Um, I know what I used to do um, in the beginning was I used to have multiple accounts. As you know, I have multiple accounts. So like some accounts I dedicated for certain hours throughout the day. So like in the morning, I might use this account, this $500 account in the morning, uh, make my morning trade with that. Then I'll, I won't use my other account until like a couple hours after. Um, just because, you know, having it all in one account is pretty hard not to use the buying power because it's there or even just to average down. Because normally if you got an account and you're taking a loss right now, then you have the extra buying power to our average down and then it end up still being a loss and you, you know, so I use, I used to use multiple accounts as well um, to grow my account, to grow one account. I used to use multiple, I used to break one account up into multiple accounts and like set time limits to use those accounts. I don't know if anybody want to do it that way, but that was kind of a cool way um, to keep me from using all my buying power up in one trade. If you have Robinhood, I guess you don't have to worry about that. So, all right. Um, did this uh, make sense on why I took this trade so we can get on to the next stuff? All right, cool, cool. I hope, I hope that made sense. All right, so next is, so now we want to go over falling wedges, right? So first, let's go over the characteristics of falling wedges. So let's do this. Let's stop share. Let's go to a whiteboard really quick. Oh, this is new. What is this? Okay. Can y'all see the whiteboard? Can y'all see the whiteboard yet? Oh, wow. But it's not sharing the screen. Okay, I, I don't know. That's weird. Okay. And I think y'all can edit it too. Don't touch nothing because y'all be touching stuff. I think y'all can write on it too. Um. That's cool. I never, I never knew that. Okay, so let's get in. All right. Don't move off the screen. <laughs> move off the screen. Y'all can draw on this, so move off of it. It's letting y'all do it. So all right, cool, cool. All right, so let's go. So a falling wedge, right? It's the, still the same thing, right? We're looking for impulse correction impulse, right? So what is the first thing for a falling wedge is we want to see it. It's called a falling wedge, right? So it's falling into support, right? So you still want to have that impulsive move, right? You want to have that move up and kind of how it work is, boom. <sighs> Who just did that? Can y'all stop writing? On, I don't even know how to make y'all stop writing on the screen. How do I make y'all stop writing on it? Because y'all just, who just moved my falling wedge? That was ignorant. That was ignorant to whoever did that. Let's just move my falling ways, bro. Chill, I'm trying to teach. And it's crazy because they don't say who did it. Okay. So we got the falling ways. We're looking for impulsive move most of the time. Mainly the impulsive move is into the top of the trail line. And then, let's cool it out. And then here we go. Prices react within the trail line, right? And it's supposed to be into support. Boom, then it breaks out, right? That's how falling wedges work. So normally you want to you want to have them into support. I didn't draw that all the way up, but so let's go over it again. You want to have an impulsive move up. Boom. So let's go there. And then you had an impulsive move up to the top of that trail line. That's that makes the top, right? Boom, like that. My bad. Like that, like that, like that. And sometimes you will have that where it kind of break out a little bit. You still can count it. Um, don't overcomplicate it, right? And then normally my target is the top of that wedge, right? So, and you want to have it in 2A support, guys. It wants to be at a support level. Sometimes you will have it break out a little bit or it won't be. You understand, guys, when it kind of, and a lot of people get this confused. When it comes to chart patterns, it won't be perfect every single time, right? As we can look at this bull flag, some people might say, Oh, Jay, it, it wicked all the way down. That's not part of the pattern, right? Why, why would I count that? It won't, price actually not about to be the same every single time it hits the uh, trend line within to make the pattern, right? It will always be different. As you can see, it still worked. Um, a good example of this was NVIDIA. This was a while ago. This is a while ago. Hold on, let me find the video real quick. This was a minute ago, so this was actually a while. Oh, wait, yeah, I can't see my screen on that one. Okay. 
how is a falling wedge different from a bear flag? A falling wedge is a bullish bear. A, a falling wedge is a bullish pattern. A bear flag is a bearish pattern. Also, let me draw it again on here. So how do you clear this? So remember, guys. Hold on. Okay, so remember, with a bear flag, we have a impulsive move down, correction, impulse. Versus a falling wedge is more like this, where price is reacting, you know, within these right here, levels like that. And then it gets smaller, 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 and then it finally has a pop, right? That's a falling wedge. And that is a bear flag where you know, price is already dropping. Then we have a pullback to the upside to go lower. So a falling wedge is some totally different. It's like going in between the patterns, um, slanted kind of ways, and then it's popping out, right? So that's the difference. Okay, so let me go share my trading screen again. Continue. Okay, so a good example of patterns not making sense was NVIDIA daily time frame. This was... Uh, I think this was last year. Hold on, guys. Let me delete all of this. Okay, let me stretch this out a little bit. Okay, there we go. All right, so, okay. So right here, I mean, it got messed up, but at the time it was still a valid pattern. It got messed up so bad. I think the market had just failed. But at the time, this was a falling wedge that just didn't break. So right here, so at the time, This was like a falling wedge. Like I said, it's not gonna be perfect. It was an ugly one. Hold on. Let me let me fix it a little bit. Price action was this is back when remember the market started getting like extremely choppy. So this right here is a falling wedge right here, right? And it kind of worked, but it didn't work as it was supposed to. Like it was extremely hard to trade this. Um, but this is a falling wedge, right? This is a falling wedge. Can you go over the difference, please? The difference of what? everybody see this? So we had the impulse to move down. I mean, Ben's supposed to move up and then kind of reacted within. Like I said, they, they, this one is definitely not one of the best ones, but, you know, it, this was one. This is one. Oh, let me go find a better one, though. But I hope everybody see that part. Let me go find a better one. These are actually kind of hard to find perfect ones nowadays. Like this one was one on Nike. This one wasn't. This wasn't. This one was a little better. Do y'all see this one right here? Can y'all see that? So we had an impulse to move up, right? And then we had boom. And then price kind of kind of reacted within it. Like I said, price action has been terrible now. So it's been hard to kind of find good falling wedges. But yeah, yeah, literally they're very, most of the time what a lot of people do is, especially Gary, what he do is he say that he called everything just a flag. Um, because a falling wedge is almost pretty much just the same thing as a bull flag. It kind of acts just as a bull flag. It's a lot more candles. That's probably the only difference. Like a bull flag is normally just like a couple candles. A uh, falling wedge can be like multiple candles, uh, you know, over time. But I get this question a lot where people say, Jay, how do I know where to start the bottom from? Start the bottom where it makes the most touches it, right? So right here, we had a touch here, touch here, touch here, touch here, touch here. So I just grabbed that bottom from here. So let me show you an example, right? If I were to grab the bottom from here, would that make any sense? Like it wouldn't make any sense. The more, the it ain't the most touches, right? So you just wanna find the bottom that where you have it slanted, it touches the most at, right? Mm -hmm. So as you can see right there, when we put it like that, you see how it touched the most, right? So that's literally where I'm grabbing that bottle from. And that was a question that I had when I first started that it seemed like nobody could answer, where am I grabbing the bottom from? And that's like, there you go. That's where you're grabbing it. Just where it make the most sense at. So then here, same thing with the top, right? Grab it where it make the most uh, touches at the top. And boom, there you go. It touched there, touched there, touched there, touched there. 
touched there and touched there, then broke out. So did that make sense? Are you gonna go back to record? Cool. Okay. So we got that down. Let me try to find some more examples for you guys. I think AMC, no, AMC was a symmetrical. I don't trade these as much, so it's hard to kind of, this is definitely not a follow wedge. So don't ignore that. I don't know why that's on my screen, but I'm trying to find some better examples. Um, oh, I want to show you what's not a following wedge. I see this every day. Now this, I actually see, like, I know I'll be trolling Isaac, but I see this every day. This is not a following wedge, right? I see this every day in the chat. No, it's not. This is not a following wedge. I see this every day. I see this every day. This is now. This is actually something I know. I'll be trolling him, but this is actually something that I, this is not a following wedge, guys. It never touched anything. Now I will say, and for you new people, I will say, it's crazy as hell that this this works sometimes. For some reason, this pattern, whatever this is, works sometimes. And people legit think that they, they were right. This is a pattern. This is not it. It has to touch. Price has to react within the trade lines, right? You see how the prices look? I'm drawing it. I'm literally drawing it for you guys. Price has to react within the pattern. Then that's where it come out and break out. This is not doing that. Is this doing that? <laughs> Somebody's a dinosaur head. <laughs> but this is what you want your falling ways to look like. This is not that. And I see this too many times. If you're doing that, stop doing it. Stop doing it. That is not how you do it. And don't ever send your charts if, it's, if you're doing that because don't say you can't. I'll talk to you anything if you're drawing that. Please. I did not teach you that. So let's delete that so nobody come late to class and think, oh, that's a wedge. No, let me go ahead and delete that right now. All right. So this is what you want your wedge to look like. And also what helped me with drawing chart patterns and getting better at it, guys? Google. Go on Google. If you think it's that pattern, go on Google and type in that pattern. If I think it's a falling ways, I'm going to go through because price action is different in so many ways, guys. It's different in so many ways, right? So it can be, you know, multiple different, you know, ways to look at it. So what I do is I just go on Google and I look for an image that, you know, mirror what I think it is, right? And people literally, they sleep on it. I do that to this day. Even if I know what kind of pattern it is, I'm going to still go on Google and kind of just like confirm that anybody else draw a pattern like this, right? And that's literally how I got better at it. And after time, I just kept getting good, kept getting good. And there it was. I understood chart patterns. I'm able to identify them quickly. So that's a quick gem. Go on Google. You don't have to go in the chat and wait for somebody in the chat to say, hey, yeah, that is a falling wedge. No, go on Google and see if you can find it for yourself. So let me try to find. Can, do anybody else know a time frame? Because I like I don't like having them already ready. I rather like you guys bring one up and we go look at it right then and there. Like that's kind of how I always was. I know I have people from other memberships talking about some Jay. You should already had it ready. Like no, nah, I kind of like so you guys kind of see like I'm not showing you oh the best of the best. I'm literally looking at charts that you guys give, and I'm finding the best patterns in that. Let me see. Like right here, this might be a falling wedge, right? Oh, I see that impulsive move, right? Let's see. Uh, and that's why you just draw it. Like, it might not be it. Just draw it. You never know until you draw it. Like, do I draw it there? No, that's not a falling wedge, right? It don't look right, right? Only take uh, patterns that look right. So I was, going, I was thinking about Baba. I was, I was like, I think Baba had one. Um... Hmm. What's this one right here? I think this is one. Like I said, you got to just get practice with it. It's like a fallen wedge right there. Yep, here we go. We got our first fallen wedge, right? Do y'all see what I'm talking about now? You see how price react within it, then it popped? Do y'all see that? We had an impulsive move right to that top. Boom, bounced off, bounced off, bounced off, bounced off, bounced off, broke out. Y'all see that? Cool. So is it? Um, I normally, like, I feel like the daily has a lot less noise. Um, 
as far the daily and the weekly time frames, I feel like they have a lot less noise. The candles don't move as fast, so you're able to identify patterns a little better. Um, so I will highly recommend, you know, if you're getting new to charts, I would highly recommend uh, starting with identifying them on the daily time frame. Um, because like I said, the five minute, like those are just a lot of noise. The candles are constantly moving and you kind of like force patterns that aren't there. So um, I will recommend, that's why whenever I'm teaching on classes, I'm going on the daily time frame, just because those, first of all, the patterns on the daily time frame are the patterns that I like because they have the biggest moves, right? They make you the most money. Also, they're a lot easier to identify because the candles are there. Like versus on the five minute, it's so easy. Oh, it's a it's a falling wedge on the five minute, right? Like, you know, they just form and you can actually be wrong because the candles are constantly moving. So you might think it's a bear. How many times have you drew a pattern on a five minute chart and then 10 minutes, 15 minutes later, it turns into something else? How many times have you ever did that? Have anybody ever did that? Or maybe that's just me or I'm tripping, right? That's what I'm saying. So for me, the daily time frame or the bigger time frames just allow me to get better at reading charts and just get better at identifying patterns because they don't move, right? It's already there, right? And this is actually, I, I kind of remember this trade. It's actually a trade that we took back when I used to trade Baba um, right here. Real quick, while we're looking at the wedges as far as entries, I'm about to get to on entries now to using them, especially for the daily time frame. What other confluences or actually confirmation we had um, to take this trade, to take calls? What other confirmation that we had? We had a golden cross within the wedge or a right when it broke, right? Good, good, good. So we had a golden cross. We had that falling wedge. We did not fall for this death cross right here that we had right before the golden cross because we were in a falling wedge, right? Price action comes first. A lot of people like, I remember when we used to have this problem all the time where, oh, Jay, it's a... Um, it's a the Mac is death crossing, so it's automatically puts. That's why I do in chart trivia now because people literally you have to get used to not using the indicators, right? The indicators should serve as just extra confirmation. You need to learn how to use indicators to your advantage, not making indicators make your whole judgment, right? People literally, literally, like I mean, like I don't know what it is, but people literally pick the indicator first over price action. That's not how trading works. It cannot be first. Price action comes first, right? Chart patterns, trend analysis, that all comes first, guys. That all comes first. This right here, I'm going to zoom in. I got you. I got you. Oh, man. We zoomed in too much. Hold on. Oh, man. Okay. Right about... Let's go here and there we go. You see that where that blue line crossed the orange line? There you go, that's your golden cross. So as it was breaking out, we got that golden cross held to 9 EMA, rolled it up. For people that sleep on a daily, remember we use that as a target, that high. As you can see, it was that high was like a magnet. It ran up, held to 9 EMA, boom, hit that target. It went from 271. This was a $30 move on Baba. Right. And that's why I like the um, this is exactly why I like the bigger time frames, because you're able to now I know we were ups and downs and all that in between that. But overall, if you would have just held about the right contracts, you will be up a ton. Right. On just bye bye for breaking on the daily time frame. That's why I like the daily time frames. Right. Um, so that's why it is. Um, now, let's get on entries as far as rising. I mean, uh, following wedges. So it's pretty much as similar as the bull flag. I try to catch them at the um, bottom of the trail line. Right. So once we start getting, you know, to the more of the tighter of that, you know, the tighter of that uh, pattern, I try to get in somewhere around there uh, on a daily time frame. They're harder to get in um, because you, you know, don't know how more tighter it can get. But normally right here, either you could have had two ways. You could have took it, as you can see, peeking out a little bit. You maybe would have tried it here, probably would have got shaken out or whatever. Um, but overall, like we would have probably took it either here on it breaking out. You would have noticed this um, before close. You would have took it and swung it. I think that's what we did. I really believe this was the trade that we took where we made like 500% on Baba. I can't remember. Um, either we took it on the break of the peak in here or we took it when it actually gapped and it held that 9 EMA. And then it was still breaking out the following wedge. I can't really remember this. This was uh, this definitely might was the trade. I can't remember exactly, but this definitely seemed like this was the trade. So either take an error and still finish. Because remember, our target is here, so we still had all these candles to really, you know, 
take it. So if you're using a daily, are you swinging since it? Yes, 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 yes. If it's the daily time frame, I'm swinging most of the time. Now, there are times where I will see someone the daily and say that it's a swing, and then it would just start sending that same day, and then I would end up cutting, you know, selling. Oh, uh, somebody asked, uh, so you didn't enter on a five or the 15 minute. I'm So for the new people, if you didn't know, I'm probably the first trader that you probably ever heard that will literally take a day trade off the daily time frame. I'm not going to get fully into that right now. You will learn about that in a minute, but um, you will learn about that soon. But yes, there are, if I was, you know, how I would have had it was, I would have made that level right there where we closed that right here. As you can see, that was support level support, support, uh, support. So you see, that's where it closed that. So then how I would have did it, how I would have did it, I would have been like, okay, trigger for calls, guys. If we break above that uh, 2170, that 27, 27185, that's exactly how I would have did it. So I would have said, okay, um, if we get a 15 minute close above uh, 27185, we can take calls and you know swing it. That's how I would have did it. We'll get more into like that as far as like strategy wise, but right now I'm just trying to teach you guys to identify these patterns and everything. Uh, but that's kind of how I would have did it. I would have made them green or whatever. And then that would have been like my target, uh, my entry. So then when you come to that lower time frames, you know the bigger time frame is like your secret weapon. And then we come back to that. Hold on, I got to go way back because that was a minute ago. Hold on. We might not be able to see that one. Okay. We might not be able to see that. I don't think it go back that far. No, we don't go back that far. Let me see if I can do it on the phone. I just want to show you kind of like an entry kind of. It's definitely not going to let me show y'all on the 15 minute, but let me see how far back I can go on the four hour. Nope, it's not going to let me show y'all. It don't go back that far. But um, yeah, I did custom and it still won't let me go back that far. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I see it. Do I really want to do all that? I guess I'll do it for training purposes. Oh, 09, 18, 2021. 20, I really didn't feel like doing this. <laughs> I really didn't feel like doing this. But I'm going to show you all for training purposes. And it still ain't go back that far. When 21.18, yeah, I did. I don't feel like doing that right now. Y'all yeah, will see on the on the strategy. That's too much. Y'all yeah, will see what I go with strategies. But it, overall, all I'm doing is I'm making a level and I'm taking calls above it. So like, um, let's see if I would have noticed. Here go another falling wedge actually right here. Here you go, right here. If you're looking for a falling wedge, Baba will be making. That's one thing. And certain stocks make falling wedges more than others. So like this right here is a falling wedge. Do y'all see that? This actually was a perfect falling wedge that broke out and everything. Y'all seen that? Y'all can see this? Yes, no, maybe. Okay, cool. So if you need a good example. And you see how fast I was able to identify? That was today. Yeah, this was over. Well, not today. It started. You got to say also falling wedges is a longer um Falling wedges are longer. They're longer. Um, there's like a longer chart pattern. So they take a couple of days, maybe weeks, maybe even months to really form, right? So it's just waiting for it to get tighter and tighter. Um, this was, this started, what day is this? This started last, was that last Monday? Two Mondays ago. So it started two weeks ago. This pattern took a, wait, that don't even sound right. Oh, they had earnings today? Hold on, I want to see something. Did they have earnings today? Oh, wow. Yeah, like, sometimes, I ain't gonna lie, guys. Sometimes, I'm not saying every time, but sometimes, yeah, they do that. I didn't know that. Yep, sometimes chart patterns. Yeah, Gary. Gary's big on that. Like, sometimes, not every time, guys, but sometimes a chart pattern will uh, uh, pop up. Like, one of the examples I'm going to show you is a rising wedge on JP Morgan that uh, for their earnings, it was, like, showing you. But, yeah, this is exactly what it is. So, following wedge right into earnings. There you go. You would have caught it. 
Um, so do everybody understand falling wedges so far? Um, pretty much, pretty simple price action reacting within two trade lines and then popping out. Cool, cool, cool. All right, so now for the one, I'm not gonna lie, I'm gonna teach you anyway, but I have the lowest success rate with rising wedges. I don't know what it is. I know the pattern. I just don't, I don't, they don't work. It don't work for me that well. Like, I don't know what it is. I don't know what I did to rising wedges to do that, but it's because you don't know if it's a rising, it's hard to kind of predict if it's a rising wedge or if it's just a reversal. So I'm about to show y'all right now. Yeah, Isaac definitely had to be on my Zoom because I never drew that. Okay, so first off, falling wedges are fine. I have a, I, I'm, I, I can win on falling wedges. It's the damn, it's the other stuff. It's the other ones. It's the rising wedges that I lose on every time. I just tried one this week and I lost. Don't mean you don't have to trade it. I'm just saying, like, I if I don't have success with it, like, that's it, you can perfectly have success with it. So, okay. So, rising wedges are here. Go the only this is probably maybe one, no, two. I had two rising wedges in my whole entire trading career that actually went my way. Two. So, you could take this pattern how you want to, but I had two of them that actually went my way. And this is one. This was for earnings too. Actually, I still lost because the damn IV, but overall the pattern is still, <laughs> the pattern is still worked though. So I'm gonna show you that, but I think the IV still crushed me on this and I still lost, but overall pattern recognition was on point. Um, but anyways, so a rising wedge is pretty much the opposite of a falling wedge. I wanna see if you guys are gonna get it right. So if a falling wedge is into support, what is a rising wedge into? Resistance, right? The whole purpose of a rising wedge is to, right? We're going, let's say this is our resistance level. Okay, that's our resistance level. We want the price to react to that level, right? And reject off. Hold on, let me draw that a little more steep. Hold on, guys. Let me draw that a little more steep. Oh, man. Okay, so we want to draw that a little more steep. Boom. Right, so the whole goal of a rising wedge is to pretty much, it's an upside down, um, it's a falling wedge just at the top of resistance now. And the whole point is to take it at a level, boom, boom, and reject off and then sell off, right? That is how it works because, you know, when it gets to resistance. Now, I will say, to increase your chances with this pattern, you need to be good at supported resistance because if your supported resistance levels aren't good, then this pattern can really mess you up because it can still have room to the upside and you fell for it, right? So this one, if you still lack with supported resistance, you want to get better at it. You want to get better at it because this is a pattern that really can mess you up. I'm telling you right now, I lose pretty much 90% of the time, 98% of the time to this damn pattern. So maybe some is off with me, but overall it don't work to me, but oh, oh, oh well, it worked for some people. So pretty much you wanna see it at resistance. So when we come here, let's draw our resistance level. Right, so what do we do? Price rejecting off this level, it rejected here. Last time it touched this level, it, it touched here, we sold off. Um, kind of tried to break above it, couldn't really hold above it, sold back down. So pretty much we plotted that at the level. This is a four hour chart, so it's not as pretty. But um, anyways, so we have price, we had an impulse to move up, price reacts, boom, hits resistance, sells off, right? This was an earnings play, but as you can see, the pattern was there, it still worked. Um, so that's that one. Uh, I'm gonna check Costco in a minute to see if we can predict earnings. Um, but let's go look at another one. Another one was, I know AEL does some pretty good ones. Um, let's delete this. AEL does some pretty good ones. Let's see if we can find one for AEL. Here go one. This was a, now this is actually a right. This was the other room I told you guys that we had a rising wedge that actually worked. This was it right here. So, boom. And boom. Now, rising wedges are so hard to like get 
like this part and i'm gonna just be very transparent it's hard to get it like once you start doing like this then you kind of defeat the wedge it's not really it's not really a wedge so you're gonna have to move it you're gonna have some spaces sometimes so i kind of do it like this i just grab a top and i kind of like pierce the wicks if i have to um like i said it's not gonna be perfect every time yeah i kind of see it now we had that impulse to move down then boom reacted within it kind of and then boom and then we sold off yeah i kind of see it now Like I said, they're not going to be perfect. They're they're pretty hard to like kind of find right away. Um, but overall, you know, and can anybody tell me what did I have inside of it to kind of to kind of tell me that it was time to break down? What other confirmation did I have? A death cross. There you go. If anybody that don't know death cross is, there it go again. So, so this is pretty much a nice little play. Um, and there you go. That was a rising wedge. And look what we have. Like, let's go ahead and draw our resistance level. Um, draw it. We have our supply zone. So this one was it to a supply zone. As you can see, we hit this zone, sold off, hit this zone again, sold off again. So um, any any questions about rising wedges? Like I said, I hate this damn pattern, but any questions about this? I'm gonna check costs in a minute. So entry, yep. So okay. So somebody asked me about entry. My bad, y'all. My bad. So as far as entry goes, now, like I said, when it comes to bear flags and rising wedges, I wait for the breaks. The reason why is because I don't know if it's a reversal, or if it's a um, or if it's a real rising wedge. So you have two ways you could play this, right? When it hit this zone, you could have you know took puts or whatever. You could have took puts or whatever at this zone, and as long as they didn't break above the zone, you could have held this trade, or you could have just waited for the break. This particular trade, I actually waited for the break. We had this long candle down. I took profits, and then can anybody tell me why did I re-enter around here? Did I took this two two times? Pull back into the EMA, right? If you don't know what that is yet, I'm about to get it to in a minute, but we pulled back to the EMA. We could not break it. So we rejected the EMA again and fell right back down, right? So as you can see, I was able, and it was still the same death cross and I was able to uh, it stayed below the nine EMA. So where would my stop loss have been if I took it on this uh, recess? I'm trying to get you to start thinking above the EMA. Keep, it, keep trading simple, guys. Literally, it's below the EMA. As long as it's staying below, we're still bearish. What did I tell you guys? So actually, I'm tripping. I got to like break it down to you guys. I forgot. So I forgot to add that. I literally forgot with a new group. So whenever a stock is below the nine EMA, it is considered bearish still. Write this down in your notes because we're going over EMAs too. So the nine EMA is my blue line. So as long as it's below the nine EMA, it is considered bearish. This is any time frame, guys. It is any time frame that I'm saying. <laughs> I'm getting the second time around. <laughs> I know that name looks familiar, but um, any time frame, I don't care if it's the five minute, 10 minute, 15 minute, 30 minute, hourly, weekly, monthly, whatever. If it's below the nine EMA, it's still bearish. So now for anybody asking, what will make it, what will make it bullish again? A close above the nine EMA, right? Somebody asked, so that means below the 21 EMA. Yes, below the 20, 21 EMA as well, it's even more bearish. So that's how that's how I use to gauge and hold my trades longer. That is why, because people ask me, like, why do you, so Jay, I don't I don't see you really use EM, like uh, indicators as much anymore. So why do you still use the 9 and 21? Because those are how I'm able to hold my trades longer for more, for more profits. For example, go back to coin today. Actually, let's go to snow. Let's go to snow. Go to snow. Now we getting over EMAs real quick. Let's go to snow real quick, guys. Oh damn! I deleted my thing. Remove drawings. Clear drawing set. Um, load EMAs. Okay, so now let's go to the fifteen minute. All right, so. All right, so so how did how was I able to catch snow today? So snow 
was actually, uh, this is a trade that you will learn when you understand trends or whatever, but snow was a little more complicated. This wasn't a regular trade, right? That most people can take, right? This was a, a little more advanced, but you guys will learn it. So let me just walk you down on how I took snow. So right now, right now it's still below the 9 EMA. So what did that mean? I just said it. What did that mean if it's below the 9 EMA? It's still bearish. So now I'm waiting for price to break back above the 9 EMA before I can consider it bullish again. So the market was pushing and we crossed above and I know that snow just fell on earnings. So it pretty much can really, like it really can run back up, you know, earnings still. Actually, let me tell you how I actually even got on my watch list. So, and I'm telling you right now, this is actually how snow even came up on my watch list, right? And I'm saying it'd be crazy. That's why I say having the trading community is, is it, it benefits you as well. So I remember somebody had took snow puts for earnings and they had said that when the market opened, they were still down, even though snow had dropped $20. That's when I knew right there that something was up with snow. Snow didn't want to go down, like just knowing that. So that's a little quick gem for you guys. If somebody ever trade earnings and the stock price actually dropped and went their way, but they still opened up negative, and the stock price starting to push up a little bit at open, most likely that stock is going to go fill that earnings gap that day. That's a quick little thing that I learned in the market. So I know that's a little confusing what I just said, but basically if a stock dropped and basically the earnings didn't hold, like the, the drop didn't hold by pre-markets already kind of taking everything back, most likely it's going to go fill that earnings gap that, that next day. So what does Snow do? This red candle came from earnings. What did it do? It did exactly what I thought it was going to do. So let me tell you how I caught it, though. Let's go to how I caught it. Right? I'm not a fundamental trader, but sometimes you have to at least understand them just a little bit, just to understand what the market likes to do. So right here was when we crossed above. And yes, I'm using pre-market. I don't care what time frame it is. I'm using pre-market. We crossed above. We go and cross in pre-market. So now what am I thinking? I'm flipping bullish now because now we're above the 9 EMA. What happened was, we broke. So after we did that, I plotted that high. I want to see that high above that 90 EMA. Like I said, you probably don't understand this just yet, but you will soon. Right. So I want to notice that high. I'm, this is where I'm actually, this is the only time that I'm using pre-market for stuff like this, for them opening morning drives. So once you cross above that um, EMA, I'm plotting that high, that high that it stops at above the EMA before retest. Right. So what do we do right here? Instead of chasing it, I waited for the retest. So I plotted that and like, you will learn this soon. You don't worry if you don't know it yet. So basically what I did was I waited for it to cross above. I seen that it crossed above. Now I'm plotting where it stopped at because what did it do? Because it retested the EMA again. So now I'm plotting that high. It's kind of like uh, higher highs and it's like swing lows and swing highs or whatever. It's, it's similar to that. So what I did was I'm plotting that high. And now that we retested the EMA, if we can break that high, I'm going to take calls, right? We broke that high on this candle. I took calls right around here. And then it held the 9 EMA. My target is right there, which was this right here. That was my first target. This was my second target as support. And then there we go. I was able to take profit. I took profit. I ain't gonna lie. I took profits. Most of my profits around here. I might be gonna lie to you guys. I took them most around here. Once it hit my target, I was pretty much done. And this right here was a 300% trade, right? Did that make sense? Kind of how I took it. Like I know that's probably a little confusing to people right now. But you will learn this. I do a lot of trades like this. Um, a lot of trades like this. Um, this is one of the, this is one of the things that I do all the time. Uh, I do a lot of them like this. Now I was trying to get coin to touch that uh, that one thirty five level because I was trying to get it to touch that high. But understand, guys, it sold off in pre market from that level. I mean, in, uh, after hours, so that level was significant for it to feel. I mean, literally, all it did was just feel where it where it tanked that so i mean that level was a good level for excess anyway if that makes sense um but let me go over it one more time one more time one more time one more time okay so what am i looking for i'm looking for it to finally break that ema and then i'm waiting for it to retest the plot that high that's what i'm doing first so as it broke above right here at first i thought it was this high because we then we retested it but then before the market opened we had made a new high Right. So that's when I changed it, because at first it was this one. At first it was this. Right. At first it was this one because we touched there and we retested it. But then again, 
we came back and we made another one. So I'm like, all right, that's probably even safer, right? That's probably even safer to take it right there. So then I went ahead, once it pulled back, then it broke that level, I took it. Now I'm gonna give y'all a quick look, a quick look game that you can use as well. You don't have to do it this way. Some people actually take it over. You have to be really active if you're gonna do it this way. And I ain't gonna lie, I wish I would've did this one instead. Some people actually take it over that open candle high. So this candle, this is the opening candle right here. If you wanna know if you're on TOS, you just hover over the candle and that the, I can't really move off of it yet, but let me see if I can hurry up. Nope, it ain't gonna let me do it. But right here, the uh, opening candle right here, that opening candle, the open price, above the open price to take calls. That's kind of like an easy strategy that people use. I should have did it here, but um, I, I waited for that uh, that high to be broke. But anyways, what I mean is if you hover over this candle in the top left corner, right under the price of Snowflake, it says, oh, or you can go on Robinhood. That's probably the easiest way to do it. Robinhood always show the opening price. So we opened at um, 116. So pretty much if we opened at 116, Calls above 116. That's another way people do it. Take calls above 116. We finally closed above 116. As you can see, we wicked, 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 but we finally closed above here. So you could have took it on this candle instead. But as you can see, I wasn't too far off because I took it on the next candle, but I could have had more gains if I just took it over the opening price. Did that part make sense? Like it's two ways to take it. I recommend, I'm not gonna lie. I recommend just taking it over the opening price that would have probably got you a little better entry, but my way of doing it still would have worked. You just missed out on some profit. So it's kind of open to you, but pay attention to those opening prices, guys. Take pictures, take, uh, take, uh, um, yeah, mine's is more advanced. My, I literally remember how I said key trading simple. I made it hard on that one. So <laughs> I made it hard on that one, but you could just took it over the opening price and still been fine. But my way kind of eliminated fake outs a little bit. Kinda, if you really look at it, the way I did it was I was able to eliminate fake outs, right? I was able to eliminate fake outs a little better. So um I would have drawn my PT at I would have drawn my PT at 130. Um, let's see, let's go make your levels. Um uh, 130 was 130 a level. Um uh, I'm pretty, it was a psych level. You know, your whole numbers are always going to be like your magnets. Just keep that in mind. So even if 130 might not be an automatic level right away, it's, if a price gets to 130, like a whole number is, it's going to have some trouble at that level. So now, as far as contract selections, and we still got to go over that, but as far as contract selections, I had other people say, well, Jay, if you bought it right there, why did you pick the 130 strike? Well, number one, 130 strike has some nice open interest in volume. That's number one. And I'm going to go over contract selection with you guys. Um, but that had the most. And then was it realistic that Snow can make a move to 130? Like, I want you to look at this chart. Before we drew any levels, before we drew any levels, right, let's delete everything. Right? From looking at this, and this is our target. Our first, our very first target was this first resistance, right? That's what that, yeah, I can see right there, that resistance, that resistance, and then this support right there. If I'm taking snow from right here, this entry right here, right? Was it realistic that snow can go to 130 from right there? Like just about looking at the charts, was it realistic that snow can go to 130? Is that a crazy move, right? Yeah, it's realistic. That it's not a crazy move for snow to go to 130 in one day. This is what I but the problem with a lot of you guys, you do some stuff like this. Oh, I got a level up here, right? This is what a lot of people do. Oh, yeah. Snow is going to 152 today. Is that realistic? Is it realistic for snow to go from all the way right here to 152 in one day? 152. You're literally calling a $40, $50 move, right? Right. I'm not going to say don't, because I'm going to have a person like, well, Jay, it did it before. It, it can do it again. And it, it might can. It might can. But I'm just saying, let's be real, be realistic with your price targets, right? Be realistic with your price targets, right? And we just took the trade. So, And that's how I'm using my EMAs, right? My EMAs, we crossed above. We started holding an EMA. What do we do when we sold off here? We sold off here. What do we do? We literally bounced right off the 9 EMA and went right back up, right? 
And that's how I was able to pick my contract, right? Picking it. And there you go. It actually went 600% if nobody, well, I was definitely not holding that long, but it definitely went 600% as well. Yeah, about 15. Yeah, the ATR is about 15, 15, 12 or 15. So this is a, another play that I took. Um, I took this in coin today. So those are like two different ways. But like, it's kind of like the same thing that I was showing you guys yesterday. And we're going to get over this next class. Not next class, the well, next class for you guys. Um, but we do have class uh, tomorrow as well. So it's pretty much the same thing, right? Price hits a high. We retest. Comes back and break that high. That's pretty much my favorite type of um, play, right? I'm looking to see where it stopped at. Let's go here. Let's use it again. Looking to see where it stopped at. What do we do? We ran up, stopped, pulled back, held my emas, took the trade. See what I'm saying? So it's kind of like the same thing. I love doing this. This is my favorite right here. I love stuff like that. It's pretty much the easiest strategy ever, right? I wish I was more disciplined to actually only trade stuff like this, but um, I'm not as disciplined right now. But with time, I'm getting better at it. But I, you know, I'm transparent with you guys. So these type of setups are my favorite. And they normally, I have a very high success rate with these as well. And I find these setups mainly on the 10 minute and the 15 minute and the hourly. Those are the time frames that I find this uh, type of stuff on right now. The most, I find these on the, those lowers. I don't do these on a the daily time frame. I only do this on like the 10 minute, 15 minute. And it always helped doing it this way. Got my EMAs riding it. Pretty much easy trade. What's the name of that drawing? Uh, you talking about like just this? This is just a... Um, I don't know. <laughs> I don't. I mean, it's like a retest. It's like a. It's like a high pullback break the high. Like it's like a break in the swing high or whatever. However you want to put it. Um, I didn't actually give it a name. It's like just like a. Um, I don't know how to describe that. Um, it's a. Um, I don't know. I, I guess we can give it a name. <laughs> we can give it a name. I don't know. It's just it. I plot the high and I'm taking it over the swing high. It's called ABCD. All right. Juso said it's called ABCD. So I'm a deaf. I never heard. I don't even remember what I learned. Where did I learn this from? Let me see. ABCD. I want to actually look this up and see if I can see it on Google. ABCD pattern. CD pattern. I just want to see if that's what, I, what I'm doing. Okay. Okay. I, it's, it, it's similar, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. I, I will call, I will call it that. It definitely looked like this. Um, let me see. We got the, I've never looked at this. I've never heard this before. So it definitely looked like it. Let me see. So we have the A, the B, the C, and then I guess the D is um, when you pull back there, is that kind of, yeah, kind of similar to how I've been doing it. So pretty much what I'm doing is I'm ignoring the A to B and I'm buying at the C. That's what I'm doing. Okay. 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 I see it now. Yeah. yeah so yeah, I'm going to send y'all a picture of what he's talking about. This is, yeah, it's similar to what I've been doing. I'm, and it's crazy because I think I never, I never like learned this though. I just kind of just like been like trying it on my own seeing like, oh, if I buy here, then it will make sense and I can use that high. So I actually like nobody ever taught me like, hey, this is a ABCD. So that's actually good. I never knew that. So I'm going to put this in the chat right now so you can see. No, it can be in the day too, though. It can, I don't never do it off of just that morning's high. This particular trade just was, it presented that high in the morning. Um, I do it whenever I see it though. Um, and I, as time go by, you know, I will start sending you more pictures and examples or whatever of how I do it. But um, this is what um, he's talking about. Um, so that's pretty much that. Um, so I'm, I'm about to open it up for questions. I'm going to leave the Zoom running. Just uh, if you're watching this, um, we are pretty much done with class. We just went over wedges and kind of my EMAs. Uh, now opening up it for questions, and then I'm going to let everyone go. So if you're watching this recording, you can pretty much just cut it off now. Um, now, the next question was, um, Jalen, I always wanted to know, how did you learn the trade? I know it's off topic. So actually, I learned a couple of ways. So one of the first ways I learned how to trade was YouTube. Um, 
my whole logic at first was when I first started trading, I was going on YouTube. It was so many videos on trading. I couldn't really find out what worked. So um, I was on YouTube just testing out different videos and kind of just trying to implement what I seen on those videos in the market. Then I started like getting messed up, like pretty bad. Like I started losing money or whatever. And then that's when um, I was like reading an article about traders. Cause at, at the time, I'm not gonna lie, when you first start trading, most of the time, not everybody, some people might give you like the raw, uncut truth about trading, but they don't, most people don't cause they're just trying to sell you a dream so you can buy their course or whatever. So um, nobody really told me that trading was going to be hard as hell. Nobody actually told me that. So um, I thought like I could just jump in and just do what I've seen on these YouTube videos and it probably will work. So then I stumbled across the, um, yeah, I can't, uh, I already explained them, the uh, EMAs. Like I was literally, I got the nine EMA. I can actually, I'm going to delete the, I'm going to make a separate recording at the end and then just upload like where I go. I can go over EMAs a little more too. I'm going to uh, make a separate recording and just upload it with that to go a little more into detail if I needed to. Um, Cause I only use two em two EMAs. But real quick, I was just going through um, different YouTube videos, and I just seen that I stumbled across an article that was like ninety percent of traders fail, and then that's when somebody just wrong to me and was like, um, "Hey, like, how do why am I using the same thing then if ninety percent of traders fail?" So then I ended up like start studying older traders. Like I, I had this thing where it was like I wanted to learn from traders that's been doing it for years, like years, years, like 30 plus years. So I started like looking for those type of traders. And then I also had a um, mentor. Um, his name is Mir. Um, I don't know if you know him. Um, his name is Mir. I also had a mentor, uh, Mir Trades. I don't know if that's his name on there, but I also had a mentor that kind of taught me a little more about like scalping and just kind of how the markets work. But pretty much, I'm not gonna lie to you guys, pretty much it was kind of self-taught and just trial and error um, because like, if that's really all it is, like you kind of just learn what works for you. I've also paid for mentorships from like different traders. And actually, I'm not gonna lie, I have not learned anything different from uh, those type of traders. I just, for some reason, it just seemed like they weren't telling you everything. Like it was like they missing something. So I pretty much just like said, I'm not doing it. I pretty much stopped all courses, mentorships or whatever. And I pretty much just like got in and learned it on my own, like just from books and different things that work for me, just being on the charts every day, watching the chart, seeing how, you know, price action likes to move, or if somebody wins on a setup, or if I see a stock run up, kind of seeing, could I have predicted on how, you know, like if I, like if you see a stock that's up two or $5 or whatever, you go on the charts and try to see how did, like, why did it go up? Is there something on this chart that I see that actually can, um, is there something on these charts that I can that I see that would have told me it was going to make this move? And then after time, that was really the honestly, if you want the truth, that's really what made like really helped me learn about trading was I would literally go to it was on Robinhood. I would go to the top movers of the day and then I would try to look on the charts to see if I was able to predict that move. Like, obviously, I know the move happened, but I want to see if anything on that chart indicated that move was going to happen before. It. Then after time, I'm like, oh. That was a bull flag. Oh, that was a bull flag here too that made it move like that. Oh, that was a bull flag. So I'm like, okay, this is what a bull flag look like. This is what a this is what a bull flag do. And then that's how it started happening over time. Um, um okay. Can you show us how to add indicators to trade view? Yes, I can. As soon as we get the questions, because I, I don't want to like stop now because I already started the question stuff, but um um, I'm going to make a separate video right after this and really quickly go over, like, put it on the EMAs and all that um, right after I answer these questions. So it'll be two uploads. And I already got the other ones done. I just got to uh, click this in. Uh, I don't use the 200 EMA, uh, mainly because right now we're not. The 200 EMA is mainly for swing trading. So since we're the market is hard as hell to swing trade and prices are just so far away from the 200 EMA, it's like no point in having it on my charts anymore. And I normally only like to use the 200 EMA on a daily time frame. And like stocks are so far away from the 200 EMA now. So it's no point in me using it anymore. Um, so yeah, I'll show you on trading view. Um, do you want us the bootcamp mentees to try demo trading Forex? Yes, yes, yes. I want you guys to get used to charts. Like I want you guys as much screen time as you can get, get used to it. It's always this, and I'll be telling people, I think Forex demo trading is probably going to be that hidden gem for a lot of you guys. 
I wish I would have thought of that when I first started, but I think that's going to be the hidden gem because it's the same charts. It's the same exact thing, right? But this time with the Forex demo trading, you can kind of practice like real life trades and actually see it go your way or whatever. And the reason why I'm saying that is it's easy as hell to come back to the charts after this stuff already. It's like right now, let's go here, right? You see how we took this bull flag on um, coin, right? This is why I'm reason why I'm telling you guys to utilize the demo trading. It's easy as hell to come back to coin right now and say, oh, like not at the market closed and everything. Oh, this is a bull flag. I should have took it right here. It's hard actually when the these are moving, the market is open to actually pull the trigger on that trade. So that is where the Forex demo trading, I thought like that's a perfect thing, a perfect thing that you guys should be using right now because you can actually practice executing. That's all trading is, is executing. We can draw bull flags after hours all day we want. We can draw that. We can do that all day. You can go up here and draw a thousand bull flags. It ain't gonna matter unless you execute. So that's what the um I thought that was pretty cool that you guys can use the um forex demo because you're actually practicing charts and actually can execute it while the market is open. It's the same charts, nothing different. Um, do you have a favorite trader? Yes, I do. Um, my favorite trader, obviously, I'm my favorite trader, but I do have traders that I look up to, and Mirror is obviously one of them. Um, I'm real open with who I like as a trader. I like Kevin Trades, um, pretty good trader. Our style is very similar. Um, and I literally, I've watched him um, before. Our styles are very, me and his style is very similar um, as far as like EMAs, um, all of that. So uh, I like him. I also like uh, Rippy Guy. Rippy Guy is really good. Um, I did a mentorship with him as well. Um, he's really good. He's really more of a scalper. I think that's kind of, um, learning from him a while back, I think that kind of helped with my risk tolerance, maybe. Um, because at first, you know, I was only loading like 10, you know, 10, 15 contracts at a time. So seeing traders load 200, 500 contracts, I think seeing that kind of like opened my eyes to like the money that we can make. Um, so he was a good one. Um, like I like traders, if you know that I like traders, the traders that I like, there are traders that you notice that have high percentage gains. Um, so you do have traders. I'm not bashing no trader right now. I'm like one of the traders that don't have high percentage gains is uh, Youthmar, one of Isaac uh, uh, favorite traders. His he, yes, he makes a lot of money, but his gains are like 12 or 13 percent. So for me, I don't really like that because like you got to have a lot of money to really make money with his style of trading. I like traders that like literally are making like 900, 1000 percent gains. Those are the traders that I kind of like. So those are the ones that I really um, like. Um, Jada Trader as well. It's actually a personal friend. If you know who Jada Trader is, um, my that's my guy right there. So look up to those. Pretty much those three are the ones I really look up to. So Mirror, Jada Trader, Kevin Trees, they're one of the ones I like. I like them. What are y'all all demo trading forex on? It's called MT4. Yeah, Gary gonna help y'all. Y'all gotta say Gary just had a, a child, so he be kind of in and out other chat but he's going to be um doing some uh he's going to be with me on a daily basis soon so also guys uh real quick we do have the other just as far as like the chat growing we do have um the rest of the team the rest of the traders that i kind of started with we do have them i know that eric um he just finished uh working he's actually he, he done working now he don't work anymore like today was his last day so you will start seeing him in the chat Bryson is back now at home, so you'll start seeing him a lot more active. Uh, Z as well um, come home in July, so you'll see them more active. So you'll start seeing these traders a lot more active in the chat. Just looking, just looking at what I know about options, it seems like Forex might be easier. I'm not going to say Forex is easier. I would say that Forex is a lot more like strictly just trading. Um, options is a little more, it has a little more into it. Um, like we got like, you know, when the fans come out and speak or, you know, picking the right contract, you know, Forex is a little more, I would say, simple in that way. I wouldn't say it's easier because I think Forex moves a lot more aggressive than stocks, though. I did notice that, like, if you if you go to sleep or you know how, like, I'd be like, guys, I'm going to go to sleep while I'm in the trade. You go to sleep on Forex. I'm not going to lie. It's going to be a whole new trade when you get up. So that's one thing I did notice about Forex. It's a little quicker. But um, the only difference is, you know, Forex is kind of allow you to really trust your analysis kind of 
versus stocks, they do a lot of like manipulation and all that to kind of throw you off your uh, trades. Like they literally will just like, sometimes they will literally change the price to where it'll come stop you out just to run your way. I see that a lot in um, the stock market versus Forex. I mean, I know they do it in Forex too, but it's a lot more, you know, it ain't as bad, right? And that's why Gary was having a hard time adjusting, adjusting to uh, stock charts and just stocks in general, because it is like that, like they manipulate us a lot. How much money do you need to open a Forex account? Um, As much as you want to start, I will say start with the demo first. Like I'm literally encouraging everyone to start with a demo first. Start with a demo first. Yeah, I'm going to have Gary walk through everything with you guys on the demo account. Like next week is when we're really getting more into Forex. I was kind of just testing it out, kind of testing the waters. That's one thing about me, guys. I'm going to always test something out before I um, like give it to you guys, like put it put it out to you guys, because I want to test it out myself to see if it's actually worth telling you. Like, for example, one of the EMAs that I'm testing out right now, like I can't give it out to you guys until after I back test it, go through it a lot. Like that's how I'm able to, um, you know, tell you guys, because I've already I basically let me go through the pain and suffering first and then I will tell you guys let me be the dummy test dummy then I'll tell you guys because not gonna lie not, I don't know everybody's personal situation but I can lose 5k and forex and be all right some people might not be able to do that our scouts um don't let forex fool you there are weeks that will yes I yep I already know I know yep I already know Forex do the same thing, that margin call, the wicks. Yep, I already know. Uh, so don't be fooled. Don't let Forex fool you, guys, just because, like, don't let it fool you. It's still hard. Are scouts or short-term day trades possible? Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly, yeah. Same thing. It's like charts is charts. Yep. Um, You can scalp or day trade Forex, but you have to learn currencies because different pairs of them. Yep, you got, it's a little more difficult Um, as far as, like, it's still a learning curve with anything, just anything. Like, whenever you're learning something new, you have to learn, like, what other ones do in that, you know, thing. I don't really, that's why I said, I haven't really started for it just yet because I'm still studying like the pairs, you know, what trading hours I want to uh, trade, you know, what trading hours are best for me personally. Cause you know, some people might say, Oh, London is the best time, but it might not be the best time for my trading strategy or kind of just how I want to work. So, you know, you just all have to kind of figure out what works for you. So that's why I'm saying we, I don't like as far as Forex, give me a little minute. Me and Gary are still working with it. I'm using MT4 for the demo as well. Uh, where can you look to find the ATR on stocks? Now, you do have an ATR indicator on here somewhere. Um, I got to find it, the ATR. But also, I do have, I still have to finish this class um, as far as um, math class where you can kind of find the ATR and calculate it yourself. Um, now, I am doing that class. I'm going to just do it with everybody as a group. But um, Juso said uh, Finviz has it. Didn't know that, but I do know that um, uh, TOS has it. I seen it on the phone. That's what I said. I don't know where it's at on the desktop, but on the phone, I did see it on the phone. So on mobile, on I think I saw mobile. So you can check Finviz out and just find out the ETR, ATR. So if you don't know what the ATR is, it's the average true range. So pretty much it kind of just gives you a gauge on how, how much can that stock move in that day. For example, I think Apple ATR, when I last looked at it, was $2. And I don't know if that's still the same now, but it was $2.50. So one time I was in the Apple trade, it had moved up like $1.80. And like and just knowing the ATR that it can move $2.50, I was I kind of like held it and gave my price targets a little more wider. And it actually, I ain't gonna lie, it actually hit that on the money. Like it literally went exactly to 250 it went exactly to that acr number and i i kid you not it was like a magnet it reversed as soon as it hit that i don't know what it was as soon as it hit that atr number i'm not saying it's gonna do that every time but as soon as it hit that atr number it, it just literally reversed on me so um it kind of gives you like a just like an idea of how much the stock can really move in a day so that's all it is that's literally all it is i think tesla average true range is uh don't quote me is it 50 yeah, I think it's 50. It's either 50 or 40 or maybe even 20. It got to be 40. I think it's 40. Don't quote me on that. I think it's 40. So that means they can move any day. That don't mean up. It's either up or down. They can move up or down $40 in one day. Um, 
Any more questions before I stop this one? Okay. Yeah, send me that. I used the best. Okay, yeah, send me that um, so I can look at that, the Forex templates. I want to see it. Because these Forex games, I've only been trading on Euro. Any more questions, guys, before I let you go? And I'm about to do a little quick EMA thing real quick. But um, other than that, any more questions before I do that? Like I said, the videos are done. I just have to send the link now. So I got some homework to do over the weekend. Remember, we are closed on Monday. Um, so keep that in mind. Um, I don't see any more questions. So all right, I'm going to stop the class. Yeah, I'm sending them to the chat. All right, so stop recording.